Okay. Hadley, my dearest little girl, my sweet creature, you're alive. Do you know me? Know you? Oh, my girl. I know you better than you know yourself right now. Oh, God. Evidence will suffice. Hadley, you need to go. No. And how is the masterpiece inside of you? Healthy, I hope. Growing quickly now, I'm sure. It's nearly time. What do you mean? Our baby, Hadley. Don't talk about my baby. Why did you take me? You were the right person in the right place at the right time. Can... can you help me get out of here? Don't trust him. Out of here? Don't worry about getting out. Security will be here soon. They'll set this all right. Just come. Wait here. This is the safest room in the facility. Here. Closer to me. I don't think so. Yeah, I know. I'm good. Uh. Sad. Okay. What is that thing out there? Samantha, a grotesque violation of genetics, but she is locked away. Joseph managed to lure her behind the loading fence. Quite the action hero, our Joseph. He did die rather spectacularly. The fence has been ripped open, and your experiment is going to tear us all to pieces. <laughs> no, no, no. All three of us will be safe very soon. Then we can carry on where we left off. I said don't talk about my baby. Yeah, that dude's creepy. The day of love, not that it means much to a sense of bachelor, uh, I can't say that word, much uh, to a bachelor like me, but oh, an old man can dream, can he not? For old men have nothing but dreams to keep them awake in the sleepy, lingerous twilight of their years, one might suppose, and the dream of love is a slave on this chap's unrealized passion, his grief, his regret. My work in the facility is a different matter entirely, however. Kane has already been delivered to us in stasis, and I still haven't succeeded with a, even a single subject. Most exasperating problem indeed. Not least, as this would be only the start of my own ambitions, my own renaissance. Dr. Milan's research has demonstrated that consciousness is nothing more than a program. A set of equations and instructions and conditional arguments, it can be replicated and it can be transplanted. Much like the body's immune response may reject a transplanted limb, so the body's most basic neural encoding, its inherent sense of self, or what Fred called the id, may also reject a transplanted consciousness. Question is how to suppress that encoding, how to suppress perhaps the human soul itself. Instead of looking for an answer, instead of solving the predicament of human morality, I am dreaming of Joseph eating me. And it's rather arousing. What the f fuck? Now here's an intriguing coincidence. I discovered that a recent but otherwise bureaucratically insignificant employee in the facility is related to Kane. The genealogy is tenuous, but definitely established. Could a genetic component be the solution to our problem? Acquisition could be precarious, but a man finds luck where opportunity and preparation meet. This man could use a bit of luck. Having opportunities, so now to prepare. Hank is mostly my fault. I'm afraid of the calendar, I told him this morning. Why, he asked, because its days are numbered, I replied, and then I had to explain the joke because Hank is not exactly the most socially sophisticated boy. He's not exactly the most ordinary boy. I should dispose of him with his host, I know, but I'm uh, modeling in, I can't say that word, and besides, I've always wanted a child. I've always wanted to be a dad. Named him after my own late father, a man I confess I despise for reasons too numerous and humiliating to disclose here, but my colleagues in the lab call him the hobo. Should probably be insulted on his behalf, but I'm not sure I blame them. He might be a kind of uh, 
or stats son, but he is undeniably peculiar. Much like me, since adolescence I've been fascinated, no consumed by the prospect of incorporation. Of two people merging, absorbing, and coalescing with each other and becoming one. So obviously been a tremendous motivation for my ongoing research at the facility, but it's also profoundly per, uh, personal. If I could transplant adults consciousness with an infant subject, it must be possible. Some calibration, no doubt, but fundamentally not a dissimilar process in theory. Transplant adults consciousness with another adult, it would certainly uh, preclude the vulgar taboo, grisly mess, and dubiously esoteric prospect of old-fashioned cannibalism in any way. Joseph is the sort of man I'd always wish I could be. Elegant, charismatic, generously endowed. I mean, I assume he's generously endowed. Chris Project is absurd. The regrowth of organs is only a temporary solution to the permanent problem of inevitably infirmity. And I and the most impractical one. Sooner or later, the body itself must be replaced. Whatever his pious pretentiousness and shrieks of heresy, he can worship Cain in all he wants. But science is, as they say, a non-profit organization. Cain is a client, even if he does technically pay our salaries. Our work here is not some occult um, apostolic devotion. It is legitimate, if maybe not entirely ethical. I'll concede medical research for the future prosperity of humanity or the future prosperity of our facility in Ralph's case. Ha. Huh. Uh, we're all about maximizing efficiency over here. And we didn't need a health and fitness officer with when everybody who works in this lab is already a medical professional. In the meantime, progress on my own special order is exceedingly exceeding expectations. Joseph has proven rather more resourceful than I'd first imagine. Though I'll claim the credit for his uh, extraordinary virility, I've started contriving arrangements for the host transfer to my lab within the next two hours or so with final delivery schedule just in time for the ho ho holidays of oh, Dr. Adams for me he shouldn't have okay we had a series of accidents in the lab actually I suspect sabotage of some sort I found some discrepancies in our security access logs but the jokes on whoever is responsible because the early termination of our last two host batches has provided a convenient subterfuge for the acquisition of our own special order. Now I can watch it on the ultrasound monitor 24 hours a day, all other parties uh, rescinded. Ports of an emergency situation elsewhere in the facility, though the diesels are infuriatingly, if unexpectedly ambiguous. Uh, back up my lab work, okay. All right. Nothing, I don't wanna wait in here. Hadley, you can't leave me. Alright, what do I have? I have a voice recorder. Uh, can I re record something over here? Because I did hear something. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Voice file captured. <laughs> Can I get a J O S E P H? All right, so I have Joseph's voice. Um, should be able to use this on that. <laughs> Excellent. And I totally knew it was going to do that. Overground gardens.
I think that's what scares me. The idea that when we die, there's just nothing. It's not nothing. Sounds like you have a life most are envious of. You have kids, right? A real family. Like people know you exist. Real life. Some of us never got off the starting line. You will have a family soon. When I die, I want to leave something behind. You have that. I have student debt and a goldfish. Your legacy is the child inside of you. This baby deserves more than what I could ever give. It deserves to be part of something. Something bigger than me. A family. A home. A future. Alright, let's check out this PDA. And this is Joseph. What a jerk! What the hell was I thinking? I don't even want to know what happened in the lab. Keep a bunch of pregnant bitches locked up in one place long enough and shit's gonna go down. Everybody knows that. But with Kane arriving next month and now this fucking disaster, security is getting tighter than, uh, than my glutes on leg day. Oh well, gotta use that line at the interdepartmental mixture later. Between this and my new skincare regime and that baby, let's make like a DNA hella case and unzip these jeans t-shirt those sluts from the organ grinder are gonna be slip and sliding off their seats and this dude's gross I hit the jackpot hit it but didn't quit it if you know what i mean I'm gonna keep this planet spinning because her name's julia kern and she's only wait for it professor kern's daughter and his assistant she's a solid 6.8 out of 10 maybe even a 7.1 if she'd shut the fuck up nice deltoids more importantly though She's in charge of Samantha and her grubs. I played this right and I've got free tickets to the organ grinders petting zoo whenever I want. More like heavy petting zoo. Major threesome potential? Oh well, maybe. But seriously, this is just what I've been waiting for. Brosive. Might even get to cop a feel of Samantha. Just thinking about it is getting me so hot. Next batch of hosts is going to feel the burn tomorrow. Got some annoying new guy bothering us in the lab about the facility's new perpetual quarantine power system. Danny something or other. Total beta. He's even got a fucking pet bird. I had to sit through a whole presentation about shit. I don't know. I don't pay attention to chumps. I was too busy dreaming about the nasty things I'm going to do with Samantha. Julia gave me the grand tour around the organ grinder yesterday. I noticed a spare larvae incubation canister in one of the store rooms. It's a bit busted up, but I think I can fix it. The real problem is uh, liberating some of those grubs. But just imagine... I could grow my very own sexy mermaid monster. Maybe I can even put it put in a requisition to Kane Tech for an extra or if smart. Oh well. In the meantime though, I've been cooking up a new sedative mix for the lab host that keeps them nice and compliant. But also just a bit awake. You know, low enough consciousness to keep the EEG normal, but high enough that they know when I'm working on my special projects. I gotta keep myself busy, you know? Something wrong with the food. I swear people are shitting out of their eyes. I told one of the interns that Danny's been dosing the rations with radioactive goo because fuck that guy and his dumbass bird. And it's totally the kind of thing a beta loser like him would do for attention anyway. What the fuck is up with his cheese diet? Sure enough, everybody was blaming that asshole in about two hours. Oh well. Managed to grab that larvae incubator and two grubs while everyone else in the lab was cramming the toilets though. Hello, Grubette and Grublina. And this paid me to hook up with some chick off-site last night. He gave me a bunch of performance enhancement pills. Like this sexual tyrannosaurus needs it, oh well. And I had to get video proof and everything. He was very insistent about that. I didn't know he was into that kinky voyeur shit. Actually, I kind of thought he was into me. That old creeper eyeballs me like constantly. Does that make me some kind of like hot wife but a dude version? Is that gay? Whatever. It's cash in the bank and Julia will never find out. We didn't already have enough shit stains around the facility. Kane has sent us a fucking health and fitness officer to sort out the food problem instead of sending us more food. What the hell are those corporates smoking in the boardroom? Because I could use some of that. It's just been fucking crazy. First, uh, our manufactured malfunctions in the lab. Don't know what the deal is there, but we've had eggheads coming in and out all hours trying to fix it. And we lost two shipments of hosts. On the one hand, it's pushed us behind schedule but on the other the bruises on those whores were starting to show now i've got a whole fresh canvas for my art 
the fuck? Oh, hey, remember Ralph? Yeah, Ralph's out, technically. It was kind of decided he'd be more useful as the PDT's printer's new CPU, and nobody else was more fit or healthy for the position. Oh well. Now we're also doing some real work for the company. Nobody has to worry about logging their macros and carbs and whatever, and I monitor my own anyway. Oh, and somebody found a thing in atmospherics. Like some kind like some kind of puppet made of rotting body parts. Pretty sure it's a hobo's girlfriend or some shit. Oh well. I guess some guys gotta get it while they can. And let's be honest, who am I to get who am I to judge? Last but not least, I think Rublina might be pregnant. Yeah, she's definitely getting fatter, and not just because she fucking ate Grubet. For reals, this is a thing that legit happened. Not at her carcass for like a whole week, and her boobs are getting huge. A little punishment, and they spew grub milk everywhere. It's actually kind of hot, but gross, but also hot. What's wrong with all these people? Julia's beginning to irritate the shit out of me. Since when are a few bruises not a sign of love? A few, lol. Chivalry when they like it, and sexism when they don't. Dude, I am totally the new resident DJ in the crew lounge. Like sexy tunes are making the bitches hot for a burst of meetup, get it? I put my playlist on repeat on the vintage boombox, pussy magnet. Kind of emergency drill with the elevator, don't know what it's about, but it's serious. Oh, somebody's fucking screaming in the corridor. Gotta go, bra. Alright, so Joseph is a real piece of work. This room is much smaller than the other. Maybe he drew the short straw. <laughs> this isn't the only small thing he has. <laughs> With the bed sheets. Sword personal. Painted portrait. DNA sample. I do have the voice recorder. Voice playback. Sit back and relax and let the grosser take you to a better place. Can I get a J O S E D H? Voice imprint accepted. Okay. I think I can use a photo. Cause that has lipstick. That's some kind of DNA, right? DNA accepted. Yep. Oh dear. Can you um? Can you understand me? Do you? Do you need, um, 